Hi, so um, I've decided to do vlogging or basically just talking to myself and then putting it out onto the internet. So this is my first one. I also was thinking about doing a cat introduction video considering I have four cats. Uh, this is Norman, who is our largest cat. And uh, he is just, he really likes it in here. And uh, so yeah, he's just here with me. Which is why the angle is a little bit off today because I decided I didn't care. I wanted everybody to see my cat because he's a really, really good boy. Yeah, he likes it. I call him Normandy and I always say, well, you're going to storm the beaches, huh? You're going to storm the beaches. Yeah. He's a cow cat. He's very large. Norm was actually... Uh, dumped on a rural back Texas road, two years old, unneutered, missing multiple teeth for some reason. And um, yeah, it's the sweetest cat. I can't imagine how anybody could ever, you know, abandon him. Cause he's just like, he's purring and rubbing his face on my hand and licking it right now. What a ham, he knows he's on camera. He's so sweet. Thank you, Norm. But anyway. So today I am wearing a shirt I got in Key West when I was on vacation with my dad and my stepmother. It was actually not nearly as bad as the previous vacation that I had gotten on with them. And for some reason I decided it was, you know, okay to go again with them. This was 2018. But yeah, the shirt hasn't, basically it hasn't fit me since 2018 because I gained so much weight. And, uh, I've been reorganizing and I pulled out those clothes and I put this one on and now it's actually slightly big on me. So that's cool. It's the first time in two years I'm wearing it. It's very comfy. It has a cat on the back of it. I really like cats, as you can tell. I'm in the process of seeking ADA accommodations um, for my job so that I don't have to go back into the office and continue, can continue working from home. Uh, the reasoning is well, first of all, I've actually, I've never worked in the office. I was hired during the pandemic after I was laid off from my first uh, job. And I have been there over a year now and I've never gone in person. So yeah, but they've just decided now that they want us in by Labor Day. Unfortunately though, I just cannot imagine being physically capable of that, honestly. Um, when I did my last job, I had to commute an hour back and forth, an hour one way. And so the problem was that I became so overwhelmed with work and traveling back and forth. I mean, that's an additional two hours a day on top of an already nine hours you're at work. So I mean, 11, 12 hours a day, I was just completely preoccupied that I let a lot of my health go. I kind of just stopped dealing with it because I didn't, I didn't want to do anything with work. And, you know, also I have this fear of men in general. So my boss was a really nice man and all, but the fear of like mentioning a doctor's appointment or something like that. It would really bug me even though you know I did do it a couple of times I went to doctor's appointments but I just I canceled like the same endoscopy and rescheduled it like five times I kept putting it off I kept putting it off because I was like I've already I've already I already went to a dentist appointment and I had a problem with a dentist appointment I had to go a couple of times that I can't do an endoscopy how am I supposed to get our day off uh, I didn't have like PTO because two of my grandparents died last year so I didn't know what to do and by the time I was laid off and my GI doctor said, look, you have to come in for an endoscopy. You have to. I went in and that's when they found the giant hernia. Who knows how long it had been like that. Who knows if it would have been that bad had I actually gone sooner. I don't know. But they said it was the largest paraesophageal hernia they'd seen on a young person. And... Uh, I had grade C esophagitis from the hernia, so my throat was actively blistered and bleeding. So that was one of the things I let go. You know, I wasn't really able to do therapy as much. Therapy has helped me so much. I do it 
twice a week, you know, working through trauma and stuff like that. I don't know how I'd ever be able to do that in person. Like, I don't know, I, I literally couldn't do it twice a week if I was, you know, having to travel into the office because I do it televisit. How am I supposed to just like go in the bathroom and talk to my therapist? That's gonna look totally sane. And then on top of that, I have pots, not pot. No, weed is not legal in Texas. Uh, medically, the Republicans need to that bill too. I could uh, go on a rant about that. But um, POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. When I stand up, I get dizzy. I find myself clinging to walls in my husband so I don't pass out. And you know, I've been doing everything I can to work on that, up my salt intake, you know, stay hydrated, stay active, I swim a lot, but as I lose weight, it's gotten worse, and that's a common side effect of bariatric surgery if you have POTS already, and sometimes even if you don't. And sometimes, I mean, like, I've had to lay on the floor so I don't pass out. What am I supposed to do that in an office environment? How am I supposed to do that? So, okay, bye, Norman. Gotta let the cat out. Go ahead, buddy. I mean, for some of the disabilities that they list on these things, it's like OCD, PTSD, chronic pain. I mean, I have all of that. I've got OCD, I've got PTSD, yeah, I've got chronic pain because I have a genetic condition that makes my joints just, just shit. So my spine's already fused 22 inches and um, I found out I have severe degenerative di disc disease in my lower spine because my spine overcompensated when they fused it. So, yeah, it crunched my discs. Now I'm just waiting to lose more weight so that they can fuse probably another six inches of my spine. How am I supposed to do that and keep employment, <laughs> like in an office? And then I also found out I have hip dysplasia and retroverted femurs, which, you know, I've always walked funny, but the pain didn't get better as I got older. It was supposed to maybe go away. It never did. I had surgery on my feet that was supposed to help. Did not. Turns out it's my hips and my femurs. They're not really correct. They're like too shallow and then they're, they like tilt. I actually <laughs> couldn't tell you which way they're tilting. Um, but my feet go out like this and uh, my hip tries to dislocate when I stand up. So it's like a shooting pain up my leg when I stand. If I do nothing, I'll probably need hip replacement surgery on both of my hips eventually. I don't want that. Uh, there's apparently something called a femoral osteotomy where they could correct the deformity and it might prevent hip surgery more extensively in the future. But I don't, I don't know either. But I've been doing physical therapy twice a week in the mornings before work. And that is another thing I could not do. If I had to go into the office, um, and this is probably far from the only time I'll have to do physical therapy considering this is before any surgery on my hips, no matter what they do. It's before any spine surgery, which I'm sure is actually happening and is not going to be fun. And you know, just the rest of my joints that are just shit. So yeah, but basically, I have to prove it to human resources. I have to um, get my doctors, all of them, the ones for the disabilities I'm claiming, to fill out paperwork. And um, it kind of feels like a gotcha sort of trap thing because it's like, please write what she is incapable of doing. But it makes me nervous because it's like, are you going to try to say that I'm incapable of performing my job? because I have worked here for a year. I've never gone in person and I've gotten good reviews, pay raise, you know, all that. It's gone really well. So it just, it makes me anxious. I don't, I don't know. And then like, it's also just completely degrading and humiliating, honestly, to have to go to my doctors who, I mean, I respect them greatly and, and say to them, yeah, I think my problems are worse than everybody else's, so I shouldn't have to go into the office. Um, 
I mean, maybe that's just like my own personal self-hatred talking because by definition, I'm disabled. I have some disabilities. I'm not in a wheelchair. So that sometimes makes me feel like I'm not disabled or like I'm not disabled enough because I don't have like a super physically visible disability. You know, a lot of it's, you know, internal. I can show scars like my 22 inch spinal fusion scars pretty gnarly. But, um, you know, on the outside, people don't look at me and think, oh, she would need an ADA accommodation. It's an invisible disability. Things are getting worse. And this is something I knew would happen. You know, my cardiologist actually, like, refused to sign off on the surgery I got to repair the hernia because he said my, my POTS would get worse. And I knew that. It got worse after the first bariatric surgery because I've had two. That's, that's a fun talking point. He said that he had patients that had had bariatric surgery who ended up in like a nursing facility because they could no longer care for themselves. So he would not sign off for me. I did it anyway because I went to four different GI specialists and every single one of them told me it was the only option if I didn't want to end up with esophageal cancer or live with half of my stomach in my chest wall. My, in my diaphragm. So now I have to go to my cardiologist and say, hey, I'm afraid of passing out at work, so can you say that I cannot go into work? And I'm just afraid that he's gonna say, I told you so. Which I guess, you know, even if he said, I told you so, that's really not that bad, but it's just embarrassing to have to tell someone that you feel like you should, like you should be treated differently. Like what makes me special? Well, I guess technically it would be the disability. It's, it's literally something that sets me apart. Not that makes me special, but it makes me different. So I should get accommodations. But, but anyway, it's just, it's really conflicting. Um, and I really fear that there will be a day that I won't be able to work. And I don't know what I'd do with myself. You know, um, I'm really hoping that I'm getting my master's degree in counseling now. That's going to be a job I could do televisits with, stuff like that. Something that would be accessible, you know. Um, after a few years, I could eventually have my own practice and do stuff like that and could really work around my health. But until then, I just have to figure it out. And that's really scary um, to rely on another person or a company or anything to do that. So... Yeah, but I don't want to be negative about the whole thing overall. Um, hasn't been a bad week. Um, I ate watermelon today. That was fun. I'm down, uh, as of last Sunday, 237 pounds. My lowest weight ever, or at least since I gained all of the weight at 15, was 232. Um, so I'm five pounds away from my lowest weight. So... That's really exciting to me. It's also kind of scary because I've never gotten, like, once I get to that point, it's like uncharted territory. You know, like I knew at this point my POTS would get worse. Will will it stay worse if I continue to lose weight or will there be an improvement? Or am I going to get, like, am I going to be wheelchair bound? I don't, I don't know. So much is unknown. And um, keeping my binge eating disorder in check is overwhelming too because, you know, naturally I want to stress eat I want to just eat everything and but I'm aware of it now so now I'm like you can't do that you cannot stress eat you cannot self-sabotage just so you don't have to face the scary unknown world of weighing less than 232 pounds but I'm still kicking ass and taking names getting it done living which is great it's impressive in and of itself um, getting my master's degree, which is great. Working full time, even from home is great. Um, I have a fantastic husband. I love him very much. Four fantastic cats, one of which you met. A corgi, who's great. But yeah, so life really isn't bad. I don't mean to make it sound like it's bad. I'm just stressed, really stressed. But overall, you know, I'm taking care of myself. I'm doing what I need to do. I'm seeing the doctors I need to see. Um, and 
I'm actively participating in my life. And um, yeah, so uh, no plans for the weekend other than relaxing. Gonna go see Cruella. Nothing really interesting or worth mentioning. That's it for this vlog thing? Uh, YouTube video? Uh, if I ever edit it and upload it, that is, because I have another video I never edited that I need to edit. So, yeah. Thanks for watching.